deploy our faith in what we are doing right now. If we are unable to give him glory for what he's already done, we will never find victory in what we're going through. Only by looking back and saying, you know, God, when I was sick, God healed me. When I didn't have anything, God provided for me. Well, I don't even know how I got to where I am. I'm not supposed to be in this house or with this person. I'm not supposed to have all of this. I'm supposed to be poor. I'm supposed to be sick. I'm supposed to not be able to do anything. And look what God has done. And if he has done, he will do. And all I have to do is believe. Oh, do I have a witness? Amen. Look, 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 look. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took in his hand the fire and the knife. And so they went both of them together. Now, you got to know, it got more quiet. I need you to see this. Isaac, like Christ, carried the instrument of his death. Abraham laid on him the very thing that would kill him. Christ, they laid on him the cross and made him carry it. Abraham laid on Isaac the wood for the burnt offering and made him carry it. The beauty of it, though, you need to see the beauty. You need to see the beauty. You need to see the beauty. And Isaac said to his father, Abraham, my father, and he said, here am I, my son. I hear you, my son. Ask and I'll do whatever you want. He said, behold, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Let me stop right there. Let's talk about numbers for a minute. Abraham was 100 years old. His son was about 16. I need some of you brothers to understand that there's going to come a day where you can't whoop your son anymore, Right? Right? It's going to come a day where he's stronger than you, faster than you, where he's able to handle you. Isaac didn't have to do it. His dad's 100 years old. Easily he could have overpowered his father, disobeyed and said, I'm not doing this, dad. Ah, oh, you carry it yourself. A picture of Philippians chapter 2, 5 through 8. Made, he, he said, made himself of no reputation, emptied himself of who he was. He, he, he said, even though he was equal with God, he, he thought equality got with, of, with God, not something that he needed to hold on to. You see, even though he was stronger than his father, he didn't, he didn't think he had to exercise his strength. He trusted his father. You know that trust only comes from a faithful demonstration? All of us that will be struggling with our teenage children, you know what really keeps them from doing the really bad stuff? It's because they've watched us be faithful. They've watched us continue on and hold on to God's hand. And so in their tough times, when they want to do something, they look and they remember holding on to God's hand. And right then, Isaac trusts his father based upon his father's faith and not his own. And he empties himself of his own strength. Of his own desires. He says, where, Father, where is the lamb? And Abraham said, Jehovah Jireh. God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went both of them together. God, this word Jehovah Jireh, it isn't God is my provider, it is God is provision. The Lord is in my shepherd. God is shepherd. Jehovah Rapha. God is healing. And what he says is, I am healing. I am provision. I am shepherd. I am peace. Jehovah Shalom. I am peace. He says, I am whatever you need in the moment that you need it. Do you believe that? Will you have faith and believe that? This question of faith, what Abraham is able to do, and he says here, God is provision. I am provision. He cries out God's name. God is, I am provision. Jehovah Jireh. Look at this, look at this. We're about to finish. 
Children, I want to say this about children to parents today. Children are only made obedient and submissive to God by the faith-filled lives of their parents. By the faith-filled lives of their parents. You want your children to be obedient and submissive to God? Live a faith-filled life. Not a perfect one. Not an extremely moral one. Not one that's always judging everything that's not like you. Faith-filled. You prove that you believe God. And they will too. Amen. That's what the dynamic is here. Isaac believes God because Abraham believes God. Abraham has lived a faith-filled life and, and they get up and when they come to the place in which God had told them, Abraham builds the altar and lays the wood in order. And the word here, and binds his son, akadeh, is the Hebrew word. It means the binding. And it's a special binding that only is made for sacrificial animals. And so it's a splaying, what they call a splaying, where they split the, the animal open so that they can cut the animal out. And so he is bound and split open, ready for Abraham to cut him into pieces. And he doesn't resist. Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Jesus could have said no. And he didn't. Isaac could have said no. And he didn't. And he lays there, look, 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 let's move, move down. Then Abraham reaches out his hand in verse, one, in verse 10 and took the knife to slaughter his son. This word slaughter is really a word meaning butcher. He raises the knife to butcher his son. How could God demand this? How could Abraham go through with it? He went through it with it according to Hebrews because he knew a secret. He knew that God had promised that through Isaac, not through any other son, through Isaac would come the promise. He knew that through Isaac he would make him a father of many nations. That through Isaac his offspring would be as numerous as the stars and as numberless as the sands of the sea. Through Isaac. Therefore he had to raise Isaac from the dead. He had to give him a new Isaac, not, not, not another Isaac, a new Isaac. This very one is who he promised me. He raises his hand to butcher him. Look at this. Abraham had a choice up to this point. Do you get it? You have a choice. The reason many of us fail in our trials and troubles, in our tests, we fail our test, because we choose to fail. We make a choice. Abraham at this point still has a choice and he chooses God. Who do you choose? Who will you choose? Will you choose yourself? Will you choose the easy way out? Will you deny the power of God? Will you be just another one that fails the test? Will you have to be retested? Abraham had to go through what we call remedial training. He went through it twice, lied about Sarah twice. Remedial training. Some of us are like that. How many times have you been through the same test and failed it? That's called remedial training. Because God's not just going to, he's going to keep bringing that test into your life until you decide to follow him. To choose. You have a choice. Abraham chose God and look what happens. This is the blessing. In verse 11, but the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. I am submitted to you. Tell me what you want. This word, here am I. You got to hear. You got to hear. It's not just, I'm over here, God. This, this phrase means I am here, I hear you, I am obedient, submitted to your command. Tell me what you want me to do. Here am I. And look what he says. Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. 
For now I know that you fear God, that you reverence God, that you think that I am God. Seeing you have not withheld withheld your son, the one that you love more than anything else, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place, God is Provision. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. Let me tell you. God held Abraham back that day. But he didn't stop himself from killing his own son. God laid Jesus on the cross. The father laid his son on the cross. And yes, Isaac records it, and we esteemed him stricken. Not by man, because he says, no man takes my life, I lay it down. God laid his own son on the cross. And was on that cross, just like Abraham, when it was time for him to be sacrificed. There was no one to hold him back. Oh yes, Abraham got held back and there was someone put in the place. But when God decided that a sacrifice was needed, he called Jesus. Who shall go for us? Who shall we send? And the Lord answered, here am I. Which is why throughout all of eternity, the song is, Blessed is the Lamb of God, who was slain from the beginning of the age. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power, for you have created all things, and for your pleasure they are and were created. There was none worthy in heaven except he who was slain from the beginning of the age. And all of heaven cried until the Lamb was revealed, and the Lamb took the book from the Father's hand and was able to break the seal. And even the Lamb's book of life is now written with his blood. Your test of faith, either you're going through it now or you will be going through it. There's only three storms, and three, three positions in life, right? Either you're going into a storm, you're in a storm, or you're coming out. It doesn't matter. Will you pass your test? Will you choose God? Will you submit yourself to him? When he calls, will you say, here am I? Or will you, like Adam, hide yourself in the bush? And say, I was afraid. I heard you calling, but I was afraid. Because I was naked. For us, nakedness would mean because I was undone and I finally realized that I'm not everything that I want people to believe I am. I was afraid to answer your call, God. Because somebody might find out that I got some bad habits. I was afraid to answer your call, God. Because somebody might find out that my life is filthy or it's torn up or my finances are a wreck or my relationship is failing or my house or whatever else. I was afraid so I couldn't answer, here am I. I hid from you. Will you pass your test? Will your answer to God be, here am I, send me? For many of us, my prayer is that you will. For those of us that are afraid... My prayer is that you will. Remember, you have not come into any test. You are not in the middle of any test right now that God has not already prepared you for. Remember what he has done. And remember that he can still do it. And you'll get through. Amen? Amen. Let's ask the Lord to bless. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless you. We bless your name, God. We lift you up. We give you glory, God. We admit, God, that we are not always up to the test. We admit, God, that we don't always remember what you have done, and we, we wimp out. We run from the test. We fail the test. But, God, that's not how we want to be anymore. We welcome the test of faith, God. Because in it, we ask that your Holy Spirit would remind us of your goodness to this date. And allow us to recall your powerful hand as you have led us through life. Allow us to testify of your good, your mighty works and your marvelous deeds, God. Allow us to stand up in courage and look forward to the test knowing that you have already prepared us to pass it. And then, Father, give us a word of encouragement to those who are being tested. That we might share our own testimonies of victory 
and remind others that you are a God of victory, that you are a God who is faithful, always looking to defend us. We love you so much, God. We're ashamed sometimes how we show it. Teach us how to love you better. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let's all stand. As Pastor Tillman comes forward and all our deacons, whoever wants to commit to God.